During yesterday's post-game video about the Canucks and the Arizona Coyotes, I said that we would have to make another video the next day about this entire trade saga. And that's what we're going to be doing here today. Let's talk about Vancouver Canucks forward Brock Besser, the trade rumor surrounding his name, the tying goal he scored in last night's game, that in which he wasn't even supposed to play in, as well as everything in between. Yesterday, we had ourselves the news that Brock Besser would be scratched from the Vancouver Canucks lineup, and I was like, oh, that's a really bold move. Bruce, there it is, baby, going out there and scratching a guy that is pretty much a veteran of the team at this point in Brock Besser. In the video we made yesterday about the actual scratching itself, I pretty much said that, you know, I could understand why Brock is the guy that is getting taken out of the lineup. I feel like he hasn't been as good as he could be this season. Of course, there's a lot of extenuating circumstances that could contribute to his overall play. But then again, at the beginning of the season, everybody was saying that Brock Besser was going to get 30 goals and this would be the year that he would break out. But he's only got like three on the year so far. It didn't really occur to me, nor did it occur to Bruce Boudreaux, that yesterday was actually Hockey Fights Cancer Night, and that they would be wearing the purple jerseys in warm-up and everything, and just the overall optics of having a situation where Brock's father had dealt with cancer in the past, he passed away in the summer, and you had yourselves Brock Besser, who was getting scratched on this night to pay tribute and acknowledge those who had fought cancer and who are fighting cancer as well, the optics of that look absolutely terrible, and unfortunately, Bruce himself said that he didn't realize that it was Hockey Fights Cancer Night. He made the decision to scratch Brock Besser the day before. And, you know, I'm gonna go out there and say that I believe Bruce when he says this. I know some fans are kind of criticizing Bruce, saying, hey man, how do you not know it's Hockey Fights Cancer Night? Like, there's so much promo and material and the team's social media talking about it. How are you not aware about this stuff? And... I mean, I don't think Bruce Boudreaux is really going out there and looking at Twitter all too often, but even so, I could understand the lack of awareness there. I personally didn't realize it was Hockey Fights Cancer Night either, so there you go, shame on me as well. But at the same time, Brock himself actually knew a lot earlier than all of us that he would actually be playing in the game. He said he got the call at 3 p.m. saying that he was playing tonight, or yesterday night, excuse me, which probably means that for a good few hours, Besser kind of had a laugh when looking at all the Canucks fans on social media saying that he was gonna get scratched and not end up playing. This is what he said about the decision of being a healthy scratch and coming back. This was a very important game for me and my family, so when I came in this morning and my name wasn't on the whiteboard, it hurt. It hurt bad. He also said that when it comes to the actual game and the goal that he had scored to tie everything up, it felt good to be able to shoot a puck into the net. It felt really good on a night that meant a lot to me and my family. I was just happy I got in the lineup, and the score was the cherry on top. Besser now has four goals in 19 games worth of play, which means that he's on pace for about 16 on the year if you do the math. It's unfortunately not near that 30 goal mark that everybody was saying he'd be able to attain this season, but still, it's heartwarming as always to hear Brock talk about his family in the way that he does and to see how important the night is, the goal was, everything. It's just a concoction of good emotions. However, in the period of time when we thought that Brock Besser wouldn't actually be playing, until the time the puck actually dropped, we had ourselves a report from Elliot Friedman during the intermission of, I believe it was Montreal Edmonton or whatever it was. Friedman at the intermission said that Brock Besser's representatives have been given permission to talk to other teams regarding a trade. And this is why this video is being made, because when it comes to the Besser trade talks, this guy has been involved in trade rumors for years. But now, with this report being out there that the agent, the representatives themselves, are able to talk to other teams, this opens up an entirely new avenue of discussion. David Peñota went out there and said this, following up to Friedman's report, It's my understanding that part of the reason is Besser and his camp would welcome a change of scenery. Besser has two years left at 6.65 AAV after this season. So already there are two NHL insiders going out there and saying that the representatives of Besser do indeed have permission to seek out a trade. This is what Ian McIntyre said about the matter. One thought on Frege's report that Besser's agent has permission to find a trading partner that is usually the last resort to getting a trade done after the team has been unable to find a fair deal. I believe the Canucks looked last season and this season to find a trade partner for Brock. Here's J.D. Burke's tweet replying to that all. The Canucks signed Besser to a three-year, $19.95 million extension five months ago, and today they can't find any takers on the trade market. Ah, oh, well, you win some, you lose some. At least they got the J.T. Miller thing right. 
And JD is being very tongue-in-cheek when he tweets this out, pretty much saying that, hey, the Canucks management, what are you guys doing? You guys signed Miller to this extension, it doesn't look good. You signed Brock Besser to this extension, 6.6 AAV, and now you're trying to trade him away, but you can't find any partners, which is why you're allowing the agent to do your negotiating for you. That is not a good look in particularly, and unfortunately, when it comes to the Besser camp, they're going out there not really giving any information themselves. Thomas Drantz went out there and said this, asked about the reports surrounding him and his agent Ben Hankinson being granted permission to seek a trade on his behalf, Besser declined to give a comment. I've already had a lot of emotions to deal with today. That is the last thing on my mind. He said this after the game last night. Rick Dollywall also had something to say about the entire Besser situation. Besser's agent Ben Hankinson not commenting on the Friedman report that he has permission to help with a Besser trade. I believe the two sides are working to see if there's a fit somewhere. There's also been discussion about trade options. For those asking, though, the Dakota Joshua injury is legit. The Canucks were not pressured or asked to put Besser back in the lineup. Now, I did see a few people going out there asking whether or not that Dakota Joshua injury was indeed real, and whether or not they didn't just scratch the guy last second after seeing the reaction the Besser being scratched, or after learning that it was Hockey Fight's cancer night, and deciding to put Besser in afterwards because it was a second decision. It appears that Dakota Joshua was indeed really injured and he wasn't able to play, therefore Besser had to come back in, which is why we had our entire circus of yesterday, where in the morning we all thought that Besser would be playing and then he was scratched and then we're like, oh no, he was scratched, that's crazy, but wait a minute, it's Hockey Fights Cancer Night, and then he actually entered back into the lineup and scored the game-tying goal, almost scored in overtime as well. Besser had probably the best game he had this entire season last night, and I feel like a lot a lot of that mojo might have been carried over from what happened in the morning. Boudreaux himself said that Besser played angry, and that's kind of what you want to see out of a guy like Brock, who at his best is very capable at scoring snipage type goals. It's just, as we had said, he's only had four on the year so far on pace for 16, so that's definitely not in the same pace of production that you would have expected out of this guy. I know he's gone out there and had secondary assists and he had the point streak, but at the same time, ask any Canucks fan who has been watching this season's worth of play, and I don't think anybody has been too happy in particular with Besser and the way he's been performing. Obviously, the one game yesterday could pretty much change a lot of that, and I have no doubt that many Canucks fans were super satisfied with Besser from last night, but ultimately you need that to carry forward, because Besser in the prior 15-plus games he had played before yesterday's Arizona win you could definitely say that he had been disappointing. A little bit slow, not the best puck mover, not the best on the boards, not the best offensively. There's a reason he had gotten scratched yesterday, or at least at the beginning. And a lot of Canucks fans would go out there and say that a trade might indeed be needed. A change of scenery might be needed for Brock to find his game once again. It's just unfortunate when you acknowledge that, hey, the team signed him to a 6.6 .6 extension earlier this year. So... With this and JT Miller, the intrigue with this team and its management continues to persist further. But then again, I mean, I kind of drank the Gatorade at the beginning of the season, too. I was hoping that Besser would be able to get 30 goals. I wanted to believe so badly that he'd be capable of doing that, but I don't know. He's really going to have to get on a big heater or two, or three maybe even, if he wants to touch 30 goals this season. Whether that's with Vancouver or that's with another team remains to be seen. I really do think the change of scenery argument makes sense here because you gotta remember when Travis Green was fired last season and Bruce came in, that's when Brock started scoring a heck of a lot of goals. We all know that EP40, Miller, Horvat, they all ended off the season with 30 plus, but Brock was the guy that I feel really benefited the most from the coaching change initially. So for the end of this season, for next season, for the rest of the years that he's got 6.6 .6 on the dot, I wonder just how productive Brock is going to be and whether or not another team taking on his contract is going to be able to bring the best out of him and his goal scoring. Whether or not a trade is in store, that remains to be seen, but at the same time, talk to the console your thoughts about the idea of a Besser trade, the updates that we have received about his agent, the representatives who are of Besser's party being able to talk to other teams and facilitate a trade on their own. What does this mean for the ability for the Canucks to actually make a trade? If they'd already tried to send him away before, but they weren't getting any takers, now they have to ask the agent to do their work for them, 
Does this mean the Canucks are not going to be able to get any value for Brock in the trade market? Are they going to have to send away a pick or two to free themselves up of that salary cap space? I'm getting kind of scared, man. I would not want to see another Sean Monaghan-esque situation go on with the Vancouver Canucks, where Calgary sends away Monaghan and a first to Montreal, and all of a sudden Monaghan is a really good player again. Talk to the console your thoughts about this Brock Besser trade update. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.